Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Miss Maddie's classroom. Today, we will have a read aloud, a reading lesson, and a quick writing workshop. That covers three components of your literacy block. My name is Miss Maddie. I am a literacy teacher development specialist with the Elementary Curriculum and Development Office, Houston Independent School District. Today's learning objectives are, we will recognize characteristics and structures of informational text, including features to support understanding. We will determine the central idea and supporting details. We will use text evidence to support an appropriate response. Here are the other key objectives. Today, we will read mini biographies. Our read aloud is called A Few Who Dared. This text examines the accomplishments of some famous explorers. As we read, we will apply knowledge of the features of a biography, determine the topic of the selection, and identify details that support the author's central ideas. This text is taken from HMH Module 7, Week 1, Lesson 7. It's time for a genre study on biography. Biography is the story of a real person's life written by someone other than that person. Authors of biographies present events and details about a person in ways that help readers better understand him or her. The purpose of biographies are to inform and entertain. Here are some features and characteristics of a biography. Biographies include facts and details about the subject's life. It may be set in the recent past, the distant past, or any time in between. Biographies may include photographs or other images from the subject's life. It is told in third-person point of view. It presents events in chronological order. And it includes literary languages to describe people, settings, and events. Here are some examples of famous biographies. Can you name other biographies? It's time to activate prior knowledge to help us make connections to the new information we are learning today. Biographies are informational text, so let's go ahead and review the concepts we know about it. Informational text is nonfiction that gives facts about a topic. The purpose is to inform about a topic or a central idea. Informational text includes details about the central ideas such as facts, examples, and evidence. It includes text features such as headings, captions, labels, list, and bold or italic words. It also includes graphic features such as charts, maps, diagrams, timelines, sidebars, photos, and illustration. It is organized in a text structure such as sequence, compare and contrast, cause and effect, or problem solution. It also includes content area words that relate to the topic. The text we are about to read is an informational text that contains a lot of text and graphic features. What do we know about these features? Well, text features help readers understand the important parts of a story. Here are some examples. Character list. Character list shows which characters appear in a literary text. Headings. Headings can show chapter or section breaks or indicate a change in narrator or point of view. Text features can also be different type styles that can show emphasis or indicate a title. 
Graphic features, on the other hand, are visuals such as diagrams, illustrations, and maps that help readers explain or illustrate parts of the story. Here are some examples. Illustrations that show a character, a scene, or event. And maps that show where a story takes place or help readers visualize a fictional setting. Now let's review what we know about central idea. The central idea is what the text is mostly about. Text can contain both an overall central idea and several smaller central ideas. Central ideas are supported by details that may include facts, examples, and definitions. Good readers determine a central idea by thinking carefully about the details in a paragraph, a chapter, or the whole text. Good readers ask themselves questions such as, what does all this information have in common? What main thing are these details working together to tell me about? To find the central idea of a text, we look for clues such as headings, visuals, first or last sentence, and repeated words. We also evaluate details such as examples, facts, evidence, and description. We use the keys to open the door. We identify the central idea using text clues and we evaluate details to determine the key idea to support the central idea. Now what's the difference between the central idea and the topic? Well, the topic is an issue or subject addressed in the text. The topic is the central focus about a text. It can be a word, a phrase, or a sentence that tells the reader what they will be reading about. And the topic can be used to help find the theme. Here are some examples of topics. Friendship. Travel. Seasons and weather. Celebrations and holidays. Let's review a strategy called Notice and Note Signpost. When we read, we look for clues that can help us identify important information that the author wants us to know. Authors of nonfiction texts sometimes use numbers to explain ideas. Numbers and stats. What does this make me wonder about? Numbers could be things like the date when something happened or how much something costs. When we see this information on the text, we stop to notice a note and ask, what does this make me wonder about? Authors of nonfiction texts sometimes use language that is extreme or absolute, which means it's exaggerated. Extreme or absolute language, what does this make me wonder about? Extreme and absolute language tells how the author feels about a topic or issue. It could also indicate that the author is trying to persuade the reader to do or believe. Today, as we read, we will apply notice and note in action. You will look for things in the text or visuals that help you remember the signpost and why it is important to the selection. You will annotate or write your ideas, so be ready with a pencil and paper. As always, we will unlock vocabulary words before we read. The first word is chronology. Chronology is a noun. A chronology records the time and order of a series of events. An example in a sentence is, The researcher wrote a chronology of the expedition in her digital journal. Chronology. The next word is expedition. An expedition is a trip that has a purpose, such as exploration or research. An example in a sentence is, The goal of the expedition was to reach the South Pole. Expedition. The next word is progress. Progress is a noun. To make progress is to improve or complete steps toward reaching a goal. An example in a sentence is 
Today, the climbers made great progress toward reaching the top of the mountain. Progress. The next word is incredible. Incredible is an adjective. Something that is incredible is so amazing that it's hard to believe. An example in a sentence is, the hikers were amazed by the incredible lost city that they saw in the jungle. Incredible. Let's set a purpose before we read. As we read today, we will pay attention to overall central idea and several smaller central ideas of the text. In different sections of the text, you will practice identifying central ideas and supporting details that may include facts, examples, and definitions. We will make annotations as we go, so get your pencil and paper ready. You will determine a central idea by thinking carefully about the details in a paragraph or the whole text. Here are some guiding questions for you. What does all this information have in common? What main thing are these details working together to tell me about? What graphic and text features in the text can I use to understand the text better? And what is the purpose of this text or graphic features? Before we begin reading, let's test if you can identify text and graphic features in the text. Take a moment to scan our text and name all the text and graphic features you can spot. You may pause this video for one to two minutes to complete the activity. Okay, let's go ahead and check your work. Let's begin reading. A few who dared. Throughout history, courageous men and women have boldly ventured into little known, sometimes unknown, territory. Some explored to answer the call of curiosity, others do for glory or the chance to be first. Still others thirst for the chance to discover new lands or spaces. From the top of the world to the bottom of the sea to outer space, this timeline is a chronology of a few of history's daring explorers from the last two centuries. Reading the first paragraph, I noticed that the author is giving us a main message. The title and the introduction statement gives me some ideas of what I am going to read about and learn from the text. 1804, Meriwether Lewis, William Clark, and Sacagawea. What they explored, the Northwestern United States. Details. In 1804, leaders Meriwether Lewis and William Clark in a team of more than 30 people embarked on a two-year exploration of what is now the Northwestern part of the United States. The United States had recently purchased the land from France and President Thomas Jefferson wanted to know more about this uncharted territory. He also wanted the expedition, known as the Corps of Discovery, to find a route from the Missouri River to the Pacific Ocean. In what is now North Dakota, a Native American woman named Sacagawea joined the Corps to help the explorers communicate with other Native people during their journey. The Corps reached the Pacific Ocean in November of 1805. By the time they returned to Missouri in September of 1806, the Corps had covered about 8,000 miles through rugged mountain ranges, down ranging rivers, and across harsh wilderness. The name Sakijuia means bird woman. 
This section of the text focuses on the Lewis, Clark, and Sacagawea exploration of the northwestern United States in 1804. I found numbers in extreme and absolute language that the author used that caught my attention. I made annotations as I go. I annotated the phrases and sentences that I think were the most important key ideas. I summarized the ideas and I created a list of details. Here are the details I gathered. Detail number one. The exploration started in 1804 and lasted until September 1806. Detail number two. Lewis and Clark in Sacagawea found a route from the Missouri River to the Pacific Ocean. Detail number three. They covered about 8,000 miles of rugged mountain ranges, down raging rivers, and across harsh wilderness. Based on all of these details, I figured that the main idea of this section is the long, hard, and successful exploration of Lewis, Clark, and Sacagawea. 1909, Matthew Henson and Robert Peary what they explored, the Arctic. Details. By 1909, Americans Matthew Henson and Robert Peary had already made several expeditions together to the Arctic. They were determined to reach the North Pole for the glory of being the first man to set foot on that remote location. In March of 1909, the explorers, along with four Inuit men, made their way toward the North Pole, traveling by dog sled and sleeping in igloos at night. Progress was slow and extremely dangerous. At different points, Peary and Henson plunged through the ice. Finally, on April 6, they reached what they believed to be the North Pole. Some historians believe Henson and Peary missed the pole by about 60 miles. This section focused on Henson and Peary's exploration of the Arctic. Again, I use the notice and note strategy to annotate as I read. What were Matthew Henson and Robert Peary hoping to achieve during their Arctic expeditions? And what challenges did they face? As you think of your response, use the sentence stems, Matthew Henson and Robert Peary were hoping to achieve blank. For the next question, use the sentence stem, the challenges they faced were blank. Based on the information you learned, what is the author's main message about the explorers in this section of the text? Let me tell you what I think. I listed the key ideas from the text that I thought were important. These ideas will help me figure out the main idea of the section. Matthew Henson and Robert Peary wanted to be the first people to reach the North Pole. They traveled to remote areas by dog sled and their journey was very slow and dangerous. Based on these details, I figure that the main message of the section is, Matthew Henson and Robert Peary are brave explorers who worked hard to reach their goal. 1975, Jacques Cousteau, what he explored, the ocean. Details. Born and raised in France, Jacques Cousteau had a lifelong curiosity about the sea. He hungered for knowledge about the world's oceans and the life they contain. Cousteau was the co-inventor of the Aqualung, the first automated scuba diving tank. Additionally, he and his team designed underwater laboratories where scientists could live and do research. Through his TV series, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, viewers were able to accompany Cousteau on his incredible ocean adventures. In 1975, off the coast of Greece, he located and explored the wreck of Britannic, Titanic's sister ship, which sank in 1916. 
The word SCUBA is an acronym that stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. I annotated by encircling the extreme language and numbers that caught my attention that I thought were important information. I noticed that the author uses graphic and text features in the text, as well as descriptive languages and numbers. Why are these important to the selection? As you respond, use the sentence stem, these are important to the selection because... The text says that Jacques Cousteau co-invented the first automated scuba diving tank that helped underwater exploration. What motivated Cousteau to create the invention? And what detail or details in the text support that idea? As you think of your response, use the sentence stems, Jacques Cousteau's motivation to create the invention was blank and the detail or details that support the idea is or are blank. 1983, Sally Ride. What she explored, outer space, details. Sally Ride and Dr. Mae Jamison share the distinction of being two firsts in space exploration. In 1983, Wright became the first American woman to travel to outer space aboard the space shuttle Challenger. During her historic flight, Wright operated a robotic arm to move satellites. 1992, Mae Jemison, what she explored, outer space, details. Dr. Jemison became the first African American woman in space aboard the space shuttle Endeavour. Dr. Jemison, who was also a medical doctor, performed a number of experiments during her eight-day space flight. A huge fan of the TV show Star Trek, Dr. Jemison appeared on an episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation. On your own, make annotations on the text. Take note or write important details and ideas that will help you figure out the main message or central idea of this section. Based on the information you gathered, what is the author's main message about the explorers in this section of the text? Write your idea and be ready to share with someone. You may pause this video for a quick sharing time. It's discussion time. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You are going to respond using sentence stamps or use your own words. Here we go. First question. What four areas did the explorers in this selection travel to? Let's see if your answers are correct. The Northwestern United States, the Arctic, the ocean, and space. Next question. Based on the timeline, what expedition happened first? What expedition happened last? Here's your sentence stem. The timeline shows that the first expedition was blank and the last expedition was blank. Let's check to see if your answers are correct. The timeline shows that the first expedition was Lewis, Clark, and Sacagawea, and the last expedition was May Jemison's. Next question. Look at the diagram. What information does the diagram show the readers? Fill in the blanks. The diagram showed the different blank, what they blank, and the details of their blank. Let's check if your answers are correct. The diagram showed the different explorers, what they explored, and the details of their exploration. Good job! Let's practice. 
we will use our text and our central idea graphic organizer from HMH. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves the difference between a topic and a central idea. A topic is the issue or subject addressed in the text, while the central idea is what the text is mostly about. In informational text, there are big central ideas and smaller central ideas in text. We already have read the text and asked and answered many questions. There are many ways we can fill out this graphic organizer. One strategy I always do is I gather all the details from the text to help me figure out the topic and the central idea. Analyzing how the diagram and text work together also help to identify the topic of the selection. Here's what I know. The different sections of the text talked about the explorers and what they explored and the details of their exploration. Based on these ideas, I can say that the topic of the selection is Famous Explorers. Next, I will use the key details, the important ones, from the text and add them to my graphic organizer. I will make sure that I only include the necessary details that support complete understanding of the text. And also, it has to address the topic of the text. Here's what I think are the most important details. Detail 1. The famous explorers explored four areas, the northwestern United States, the Arctic, the ocean, and space. Detail 2. All the explorers faced challenges. They traveled to remote areas, the coldest places, the deepest ocean, and infinite space. All their travels took time and were dangerous. This is your independent practice. This is now your independent time. You will complete the rest of the graphic organizer by adding one more important detail. Make sure to use only information from the text. After you add the last detail, figure out the central idea or the main message of the selection. Remember that this is your independent practice and you must complete this activity on your own. Pause this video and set your timer for 10 to 15 minutes to complete this activity. Here's your exit ticket. Read the few who dared and answer each question. Set your timer for 5 to 10 minutes to complete this activity. It's writing workshop time. Get your pencil, your paper, and your creative ideas ready. Today, we will create a reading response. In the text, A Few Who Dared, you read about the explorer's fascinating explorations of the land, the Arctic, the ocean, and space. Follow the steps below to create your reading response. First, read the prompt. Then, create a plan. Then, write. Pause this video and set your timer for 10 to 15 minutes to complete this activity. Amazing work! See you next time here in Miss Maddie's classroom.